Hey everybody, welcome back to uh, the update here for about the middle of January. I'm getting getting this in a little bit late. Uh, been spending more and more time over in the garage uh, working on the plane. Uh, since I was waiting on some parts for the uh, fuel tanks and uh, kind of putting that off until I get the fuel tanks done, hopefully get the wings done, I put the wings into storage and start working on the fuselage. It's kind of where I left off last time. Uh, at least working with the the rear portion of the fuselage and um, getting the initial ribs set up, and um, this is this is where we're at. It's actually kind of an interesting puzzle to put this together. Um, a lot of it's just basically the same thing over again, where it's a different type of part and you're fitting parts together, just following the instructions along. Um, but there's it's not the ribs like you would normally be seeing in the ribs or the flaps or ailerons or anything like that. This is uh, actual structural parts now. Um, so, you know, just getting going on this. So you can see the uh, little round hole there in the middle of that square piece is the reinforcement for the steps, and those will go on both sides. Um, a lot of what I do when I'm putting this together is I do a lot of dry fitting, testing, take it apart a little bit more and put it back together. Um, just kind of see how things fit. Um, this is, uh, I put that rear uh, skin on there for the rear portion of the, the, the fuselage itself inside the cabin, just to kind of see how that goes. And uh, it's, it's kind of neat seeing things take shape like that. Uh, I had no intention of actually installing it at that time because it's a little bit further down the road. Um, I wish I had the camera down a little bit further here so you could see the absolute back end of the uh, the fuselage there um, it's kind of a tricky portion of things to get skin the skin wrapped around there's actually a um, third piece of skin that uh, goes wrapping around that portion and I'll show that here um, hopefully and uh, it just reinforces it I didn't even notice it was uh, supposed to be there and uh, one of the other slings flying here they, that part came in late and the plane was actually already done so they put it on the outside and the instructions actually show for it to be on the inside so um, it was nice to be able to see that and catch it and uh, go dig around the box to get it because there's uh, three different layers of uh, skin at points in time here it is a little difficult to get all the the pieces lined up and I'm putting a lot of extra clecos in place to really align things correctly um, so it might look like I'm completely overkill on the Clecos but uh, in reality uh, you almost have to have that many in just to kind of blend it together um, what I'm doing here is uh, one of the side skins had a tiny wrinkle in it um, this is something we missed during inventory when we first got the kit and uh, I called up the factory and they were like oh just roll it out and I've I, I haven't honestly done much body work or any body work at all, so I wasn't sure what I was needed to do. And uh, I got some material down at the auto parts store that uh, helps kind of roll out or uh, kind of press out the wrinkles, um, which worked out really well. You can't see it at all anymore. Um, here, what I'm doing is uh, I've got some of the wiring out for the, uh, the rear portion of the airplane um, because I've got an extra USB connection going in there. Uh, I needed to basically pull the wiring through the wiring harness that Midwest put together because it was an add-on and uh, so it just didn't come from their build initially like that. They did send me the wires out and everything else that went with it. Uh, the one downside was is that the uh, cable uh, harness was already fully occupied or fully, fully populated so I had to put another uh, port in there and uh, tip the camera down a little bit. I did have to take that whole rear section off because uh, after I started putting things together with the Clecos, I noticed that I had missed two Clecos that were actually in the absolute rear portion of the, the, the fuselage there. Um, I tried. There was just simply no way for me to uh, put rivets in and the rivet gun into that, that for the, the farthest part of the, the uh, fuselage there. And pull those out so I had no choice to take all the skin back off and pull the rivets and um, I'm generally pretty good at paying attention to that kind of stuff but uh, I'd built that rear most, rear most portion of that part months ago and uh, had every intention of taking care of that when I went to go put it together but it just it didn't get done and it's in a spot that's just really hard to see 
So I got that off, got it back together, and uh, you might notice a little bit coming up here in a little bit in the video. Um, one of the longerons is actually missing uh, from this side, um, and that's intentional. Uh, and I'll explain that here in a minute. Um, and this is where actually I discovered it. Um, things just the, the part fit, but it the the alignment wasn't the same. See how that L shape there is different. Um, from the factory, that's what it was labeled, the right. But the alignment was different than what the other part was. Uh, so I hopped on the phone uh, and uh, did a quick uh, video chat with uh, uh, the folks out in Torrance. And what they had discovered was that the part was the part from the factory was actually labeled incorrectly. It was labeled the right part, but it actually was a left part because it did it was exactly the same as the left part. Um, so uh, fortunately, the, the the best part was is it just didn't it didn't hold me up on putting the skin on because that long run will slide all the way into place, no problems. Uh, so they basically worked to get that together and uh, shipped it out. And I've got the part now. Uh, I just don't have the uh, this rear fuselage on the bench at this point in time, but I did slide it into position. It's still got the plastic covered on it. It hasn't been cleaned or anything like that. So um, once I get the, the wing that's currently on the bench uh, off and or finish both wings, actually, the wings are going to get taken care of here before... I get back to this. Um, but there's just one row of rivets and that long run is just not in place at this point in time. It's, it's occupying the hole, but it's, it's not riveted into place and nothing's been done with it. So I'll come back around. Uh, certainly won't forget to rivet that. Um, there, this is where I took this all the way back apart and got the riveting back together and then refit it. Um, the nice part is, is, uh, it's tough to get this skin on the first time. But once you go through it the first time, uh, the parts are already starting to sort of take their shape in the final position. So the second time you put it back together, it's, it's just not a big deal. Um, and at this point in time, I went through and uh, just started riveting everything together. Um, of course, you know, sometimes you get carried away. The, you're not supposed to rivet the top row because that's where the top skin is going to mate down to that. And I think I prob probably put four or five rivets into place before I recognize that it's like, Hey, wait a minute. So eh, I drilled those out. It's not a big deal at this point in time. Um, if you get this far into the, the, an airplane build like this and you have not accidentally put extra rivets in, um, then you're doing better than I am. Uh, for whatever reason, the camera, uh, I didn't have on it for the main room. So this is the second part of the shop or the garage. And this is my neighbor helping me get the, the wing in place and the fuselage put back into storage. Um, and if you may recall, uh, I've got some fantastic neighbors that uh, are allowing me to store parts in their garage, which is immediately next door. Um, that was me, my neighbor Jason and I moving the, the rear fuselage off the bench and putting the wing back onto the bench so that I could uh, start working on getting the, the final leading edges put into place. Um, I wound up running a little bit short of the uh, uh, rivets for the top portion of the fuel tank that I'm working on here. Um, I part of that's because I had some problems with the uh, initial the the fuel tank that's actually behind this one, and I wound up having to drill out a series of rivets, and so I consumed more rivets than I should have. Uh, I probably still need a few extra, but uh, they just put some in an envelope and and got them out to me. Um, Generally, the way it works, if I'm running short of parts or there's something that's missing, um, you know, I work over the weekend, I work around it as much as possible, and then on Monday, I just touch base with them. And if they've got it in the shop in Torrance, then they uh, pop it in an envelope or a box or whatever and get it out that day, and then I usually get it by Friday. Um, so I try to work during the week on things that I don't need, that I'm not waiting on parts for. Um, the fuel tanks uh, are definitely probably the one of more challenging parts of this project because there is no room for error. Uh, if there's the tiniest leak, it's going to be very, very difficult to find. And that actually is where I'm sitting right now. Um, this weekend's project is going to be to find the holes in the tank because both tanks have some leak somewhere. Um, so that's, that's the next project. So... The, let's see, this is the right wing that's on the bench and uh, just getting the wiring all taken care of. 
uh, it goes pretty quick. Uh, and I, I deliberately do the harder parts first. So the, the, the left wing with the pitot tube I did first so that, you know, this part's going to be pretty easy. What I'm doing here is I'm prepping for, and uh, this is definitely an, uh, an adjustment that you won't see in the kit or anything like that. Uh, I'm opening up a, an access hole for the USB connection uh, at the leading edge of the wing. And that's what the hole looks like once I get it drilled out. Um, if you look inside there, there's a USB connection that uh, that's what I drill the hole out with. It works pretty good. Makes a nice round, smooth hole. Well, it, it, it's round. Uh, i got to file it out and uh, fix it. You can see me dimpling those holes uh, where the skin is going to, or the, the plate is going to mount to in the background there. And um, that's the plate that goes in that spot. Um, I just get at those off online and um, they make it pretty easy. The holes are a little undersized, but not a big deal. I just drill them out and then I um, dimple them and then I use some of the extra dimple uh, rivets that come with the wing to put that into place. It's pretty smooth in, in line. I mean, it, it, it certainly is going to be a hole, but the, the purpose of it is is to allow for power to go through or, you know, pass through the wing so that the camera that's mounted and the cameras will be mounted along the rivet line or the rib line um, so I can run the cameras uh, full time uh, on the leading edges of the, edges of the wings rather than having wires dangling out. Um, if you have been to Torrance and flown the demo plane that's out there, they do have cameras on the leading edge of the wing, but uh, what they're doing is they've got a, a wire that comes from the one of the access panels and then comes out and it's just taped along the, the, the wing itself so it doesn't interfere with anything. I, you know, that certainly works, but it's not as uh, tidy as this, and I'd like to have something that's fairly clean. Um, so that's all done. Uh, I've got everything all taken care of as far as the access port, and um, then it's just... Clicos along the leading edge, Clicos along the rear um, uh, uh, strut, or not strut, but the uh, the, the rear rear rib there. And um, once that's done, then you just fill in the rest with the the Clicos. And um, after that, it's just uh, rivet away. Um, took me a couple of evenings to uh, get this done. I, I got a later start than I wanted to one of the nights, but. Uh, um, typically the way I do this is uh, I will do the leading edge with Clicos every other hole and the rear spar, that's what I was looking for, the word, um, again every other hole and um, then the ribs as well, every other hole. And then I fill in the holes with the, the, the current rivets and then I go through pull the Clicos out because the rivets are already holding everything in place every other hole. and. Um, I gotta say, I mean, the rivets, they, the, everything matches up real well. <clears throat> the one thing that you definitely don't want to do is push real hard. Um, you want to make sure it kind of gently goes in. And yeah, sometimes it, you know, it takes a little bit of uh, elbow grease to push it in. But if you're pushing real hard, what happens is there's a tab that the, the ribs will go into. And uh, if you push real hard, that tab will actually bend rather than allow for the rivet to go through. Uh, I discovered that when I was working on the left wing, and it was actually the lower ribs that uh, I caught it a couple times. So, um, learning experience, um, I got it fixed. Fixed it, or, you know, learned about it before I enclosed things. So, um, and then it was also something that I definitely inspected as I went along. Uh, the access plates that are on the bottom there do al allow for some access to be able to, you know, kind of stick your hand up in there and feel it out. Um, that's just the trailing edge of the, the step there that, that I'm finishing up. Um, I'm just back out the next night and uh, working on finishing up the rivets. Um, goes pretty quick when that's all that's left. Um, these are the smaller ones. The smaller ones, the smaller rivets on the, the wing tend to be a little bit more finicky going in there. Um, sometimes your finger, fingers can't press the rivets down into the hole smoothly. So what I'll do is I'll take the rivet and put it into the rivet gun and, and use the, the um, structure of the rivet gun to kind of help guide it through. Um, sometimes you kind of have to wiggle it around a little bit, but you can hear it kind of work its way into the hole. Um, and that's without really pushing hard. It just eventually says, oh, okay, fine, I'll, I'll allow you to go in here. Um, so um, once this was done, and actually that 
if you look down in there on the bench below the wing, that's the longer run that's got to go back to uh, Torrance, and that got shipped out this week. So they should actually receive it either today or uh, first part of next week. Um, I try not to keep too many spare or scrap parts around because it just they get in the way. Um, one section that I did cut out uh, of the video here just for brevity is. Um, Oh, and this is actually uh, the ProSeal mix that's independent of the tube. So it comes in a can like that, and then the uh, the little black, or I'm sorry, the little white container has the black portion of the mixture. So that way you can mix up small batches to touch stuff up and whatnot. Um, it goes quite a long ways. As I was saying, um, it's now to the point where, so I've got everything out of the spar boxes, so the boxes, those boxes aren't needed anymore everything out of the empennage box, everything out of the um, uh, uh, wing box, all the parts for the wings. And uh, I had a fair amount in the um, fuselage box, but that's down my father-in-law's house. And it was getting to a point where I really needed to have it more, more open. So I brought all the parts down. They're all spread out in the basement so I can easily identify things. And uh, then one of the things I did over the last week was tear down the boxes and that took a full day's worth of work to just tear them all down. This is me doing the pressure test on the uh, fuel tanks. Um, I certainly was not happy because basically I poured the water into the tube and it created a perfect level, uh, which it's not supposed to do. The water is supposed to be kind of odd ended. Um, what I'm doing here is uh, touching up the rivets for the landing and taxi lights and put a little more epoxy on the back so that uh, those rivets won't turn, or uh, the rivnuts won't turn. Uh, I got the uh, reinforcement skins inserted into the top and bo bottom portion of the wings. That was a little tricky. Um, just a note that if you are building the wings that uh, I would recommend doing that part before you put the uh, skins on or the at least one of the sides of the skins because it, I had to kind of wrap it around in there to to get it in place and uh, it, it was a little tricky but you know I still got it it's it's not a big deal um, so this is the leading edge of the wing uh, that's not part of the fuel tank it's uh, the the outboard outboard most part of the wing uh, so you can see the wing tip actually sitting that gray part closest to the camera or close to the bottom of the screen that's the wing tip that will go on the end itself. And uh, that'll be one of the projects this weekend as well. Uh, so that, that leading edge of the skin needed to go on before I could work on the, the wing tip. I also need to get the, uh, the taxi, or not the taxi, but the uh, position lights installed onto the, the, those wing tips as well. Um, that, that'll be other, another one of the jobs for the weekend. But uh, this is, other than the fuel tank, the last of the, the skin to go on the wings. So, let's see, what else to show you here? Oh, yep, so working with the rib nuts there. Um, oh, and this is where I drilled out the, um, and I put, the, put four rib nuts in the rib at the very outermost uh, portion of the wing. And that's where the mount for the camera is going to go. Uh, it'll give it the most secure mount that, that you can have on the wing. Um, when the wing's not holding the, the camera, it'll just have a screw in that hole and, and fill that in. So that's what I was doing there. One thing that's kind of handy is uh, I got a, um, a, a friend of mine had a, a magnet on a stick and I cannot tell you how much I've been using that. Anyway, stay tuned until next time. Um, I'll have more here in a couple weeks, and um, hopefully I'll have the fuel tanks done and everything together. So I will talk to you guys soon. Uh, you know, comment, subscribe, all that other fun stuff that YouTubers do. So thanks very much. Bye.